The basic premise of a steam locomotive is simple. Fire heats water, water turns to steam, steam goes into cylinders, makes thing go. Since the invention of Stevenson's rocket, locomotive engineers have been improving upon this concept for years by adjusting the size of boilers, the amount of heating tubes per boiler, the shape of the cylinders, etc, etc. Another aspect of a steam locomotive is the fuel it burns to produce the heat needed to boil the water. Most steam locomotives use coal as it burns hot and for a long time, while there are others that use oil or similar liquid fuels. Many old American Civil War era engines burn wood, but long story short, as long as it produces enough heat, it can be used to fuel a steam locomotive. So what about electricity? In the early 1940s, Switzerland faced a problem. The country does not have large natural reserves of coal, so most locomotives running on Swiss rails had to be powered by electricity, which would be easily generated thanks to the many hydroelectric plants built in the mountains. However, steam locomotives were still frequently used for heavy freight work and shunting, and as such, Swiss railways had to import coal from Germany to fuel their trains. Because Germany was somewhat occupied blitzkrieging their neighbours at the time, the price of importing coal had been become more expensive, which meant that Swiss railways needed to come up with a solution that would reduce their coal consumption. Because most of their railways were already electrified, they figured, why not use electricity to heat the water? And so, in 1943, as an experiment, Swiss Federal Railways fitted two 060 shunting engines with pantographs which could take power from the overhead power lines and power heating elements fitted in the boilers of the engines, similar to how a kettle works. Once up to pressure, the engines could run for 20 minutes without a power supply. They also kept their fireboxes filled with hot embers for when the engine had to run without power for a long time. The engines also took around one hour to come to pressure. The heaters worked well, saving roughly 700 to 1,200 kilograms of coal each day, but the savings weren't enough to justify fitting all of their locomotives with pantographs and heaters. By 1951, these electric heaters were removed, with no other engines being fitted with electric boilers. The design, however, did inspire the invention of electric preheaters. Most steam engines can take up to four hours to heat the water in their boilers, and so preheaters were fitted to speed up the process, mostly in Swiss and German locomotives. The heaters keep the boiler warm overnight or automatically begin to heat the engine in the morning. While it's much more efficient to simply power an engine with electricity instead of using it to heat a boiler, the experiment did provide an opportunity to improve the efficiency of steam locomotives, allowing them a few more years of service before diesel power took over. Not a bad solution, although if I were a locomotive, I think I'd stick to coal. Subscribe for more.